Roberto A. Almodovar. Exactly 2004 words P.O. Box 1661. First North American Serial Rights Klamath Falls, Oregon, 97601. Copyright 2018, 2022 Roberto A. Almodovar. Angel Island, a Salah Project story. The Mr. T was moored between two mooring balls just off the northwest side of Angel Island State Park on San Francisco Bay in the protected waters of Iola Cove. Her beautiful mane and head sails furled in, only her tall white mast and 41-foot waterline gleaming in the calm waters of a full moon. Damien stood behind a double-wheeled helm staring across the moonlit mooring field adjacent to the public docks, the ferry terminal devoid of people and boats, the beach empty, the park long closed and tourists off the island. He looked at his watch it was 11 p.m. The tall mast and steaming light of the Freedom rounded Raccoon Straits and became visible from Ayala Cove as she slowly motored in right on time. Damien smiled at the approaching sailboat, its large single white sail lay flaked hanging in lazy jacks below her wishbone-shaped boom. He prepared three fenders waiting with dock lines as the Freedom slowly pulled up on her port side. The two boats came together, and he tied off the center cleats of both, followed by the bow and stern lines. The motor stopped and out from the cockpit came Captain Yuli Rivera the most capable and beautiful sailor he'd ever met. It had been 12 years of friendship sharing the love of sailing. It kept them together, yet the independence also kept them apart. Ahoy skipper! He yelled with a smile as he watched her prepare for their weekly raft up ritual, wondering if she would ever sell her boat, more so wondering if he really could live with someone after so long. He would never have considered it, except for the love of Yuli. You ready baby, her petite Spanish accent bellowing from below her cabin. Damien turned around and smiled at his guitar, its gold hardware, and metallic strings glistening in the moonlight, hanging safely on the mast of the Mr. T. I'm ready honey. Damien yelled back as she appeared on deck with her own guitar and then jumped across onto the Mr. T. It sure is calm out here tonight, she said coming aboard, at least there aren't any other boats out here to bother with. Damien looked into Yuli's brown eyes, she into his, followed by a long kiss and warm hug, it was a long week and good to see her. He had the deck table up with a bucket of champagne on ice and poured her a glass, and realized she was right, there were no other boats moored at the cove, so far, they were alone, perfect. After a quick toast, they reached for guitars and for the next hour the cove was filled with beautiful acoustic and electric music. The rhythm and melodic sounds continued, accompanied by their flirtatious teasing and singing, until the music slowly died down, the guitars finally stowed. It was Yuli's turn to spend the night on Damien's boat. They both paused took a moment to gaze up at the night sky, which was stunningly clear for San Francisco Bay. So clear that even the canopy of stars dominating the Milky Way were visible, and the bright full moon so clear in the night sky. So beautiful tonight, smiled Yuli, Damien concurred and thought he'd never seen them so bright before. After a moment of stargazing they both disappeared below deck. Damien slowly woke up, as usual Yuli was long since gone. He lay there staring at his pillow in one of his lucid half-awake half-asleep moments before turning over to look at his cabin clock, to his surprise it wasn't where it should have been, he turned over to the other side and there it was. But he couldn't tell if it was 5.09 or 9.05. Clearing his eyes, he gazed around the forward cabin, as early morning fog gently flickered in from the port side portal. He sat up and made his way out of the cabin, only to discover the impossible had happened. The saloon and settee berth were on the wrong side of the yacht as was the head, galley, and navigation station. He cleared his eyes again trying to focus, not quite fully awake. He stood there for a moment, head cocked to one side, biting down on his lower lip trying to sort it all out as his eyes scanned the inside of his boat in silence. Finally, he burst out laughing as a sense of dread tickled the nape of his neck, then looked over at the navigation station and stopped laughing. 
not only was the NAV station on the wrong side of the yacht, the GPS, radar, and chart plotter readout overlays along with all the LED menus, labels, numbers and symbols were reversed as if in a different language. He nervously reached down under the NAV station and pulled out his old tattered paper chart book, it too was reversed. What the hell? He blurted, taking a closer look, then tossed the chart book, everything around him was reversed as if he was staring in a mirror. He panicked and desperately made his way up the companionway steps, fumbling furiously to get the hatch lock opened which was on the wrong side, in an effort to reach the early morning. Air if only to get a fresh breath. When his head popped up taking that breath to gaze around in the pre-dawned air he shuddered in terror. Ayala Cove and Angel Island State Park were laid out in front of him in the thinning fog as if seen in reflection. He gazed in confusion, fear, and disbelief at the mirrored image of Ayala Cove before him. What is this? he blurted, shaking his head and laughing, this is some kind of joke isn't it? He yelled across the calm waters of the cove, he could hear the faint echoes of his outburst bouncing back from the hillside above the silence of the early morning air. A high-pitched scream and a brief splash of activity caught his attention near the shore and for an instant Damien saw it. The deer was quickly dragged into the water its cries quickly muffled disappearing below in a splash of red gurgling foam. He couldn't believe what he'd seen, it looked like a crocodile or alligator. Jesus Christ, it had to be a croc, Damien blurted to himself, what the hell is a crocodile doing here? He knew all too well that no such animals lived anywhere on San Francisco Bay. He stood watching in astonishment for any signs of it, whatever it might have been, was gone. In his panicked state he returned to his own dilemma, glancing around the cockpit of the Mr. T, it was undeniable, like everything else on the yacht, the cockpit was reversed. The main sheet winch had been on the starboard side, now on the port side, along with engine controls. God, what's happening? He said to himself, sitting down reeling, trying to come up with an explanation. He started across the cove as Don approached and the park rangers were up preparing the docks to receive the first. Ferry passengers from San Francisco. He reached for his radio and channel 14, traffic, this is the Mr. T word at Ayala Cove, over he said. Mr. T, traffic, came the response. Traffic, Mr. T, I wish to report seeing a deer taken from the shore of Alaya Cove by a large aquatic animal, it looked like an alligator or crocodile. Mr. T traffic, say again. Something fucking huge with teeth just pulled a deer into the water at Ayala Cove, please let the dock attendants and park rangers know. Traffic, Mr. T, please stand by we are sending a boat. Roger traffic. Mr. T, out said Damien wondering if he shouldn't have told the Coast Guard what he'd seen, they really would think he was crazy if he also told them he was seeing everything reversed. He sat down, finally concluded that he may have suffered some kind of stroke, wondered if a brain injury could affect the way he was now perceiving the world, his heart skipped a beat and his eyes filled with tears of dread. The Zodiac Coast Guard boat had completed a thorough check of the cove they did find signs of a struggle on the beach where Damien pointed out but found nothing after searching carefully in the surrounding waters for the next hour. Yuli Rivera stared across at her sailor friend and lover she'd known for over a decade, sipping her dark roast coffee. Damien was frightened, pale and trembling, certainly not the Damien she left earlier in the morning. He'd never called her in like this before pleading for her to return as quickly as possible. Thanks for coming back out, said Damien nervously, Yuli, something's happened to me, he blurted trying to hold back his terror, in addition to whatever killed. That dear, I woke up seeing everything in reverse this morning. Yuli, I think I may have had a stroke, it's either that or something is terribly wrong with the world. A stroke, she asked. It must be, he replied, I can hardly read anything, even my cell phone, it's like I'm staring in a mirror, but I'm the one missing in the goddamned reflection. He went on to explain. Yuli reached for his hand looking him in the eyes, she listened to what he had to say deeply concerned. 
As far as she could see, the boat, its winches, controls, and objects above or below deck hadn't changed since their earlier encounter and all seemed perfectly fine to her. Damien if you think you've had a stroke, you need to radio for emergency help, get that Coast Guard boat back out here right now, she said looking around the cabin, she ran her fingers through his shoulder length hair. Damien stared at her in disbelief as he suddenly realized Yuli's tiny little mole was on the wrong side of her chin, he took a sip of his coffee, God, he blurted, you're reversed too. Baby you really aren't okay, are you, she said as he shook his head, that's when she noticed him. Oh my God, your tattoos, she reached forward and pulled up his shirt. His tattoos were all reversed, so were his skin imperfections. She let go of his shirt and sat back shocked, his earring was on the wrong side. Yuli couldn't believe what she was seeing, perhaps he was playing a joke on her, she reached forward and carefully examined him, she couldn't decide whether to laugh or cry, this wasn't a stroke. Damien looked down at his tattoos, the only things he could read, my god Yuli. What's happened to me, he stared at her and she at him both trembling in terror. She dropped her coffee reaching out to hug him, and he hugged her tightly, both in the realization something unexplainable and fantastic had happened. Baby let's go, she whispered in his ear, this isn't a problem with your brain, but we need to get you checked out, at least to a doctor for a physical. Damien looked into Yuli's eyes nervously and nodded. The nearest medical facility from Angel Island is the Fargo and Smith Medical Center over in Sausalito, said Yuli with a smile, leave your boat moored here at the cove for now, let's go on the Freedom, we can sail there in less than an hour. Damien had mixed feelings about leaving the Mr. T but knew she would be fine in the company of the park rangers and dock attendants for the day. It was still early, the sun on the rise. It never dawned on him that the sun was rising from the west.